As the result of an impressive performance by Julio Jones and a rough debut from Byron Maxwell, the Falcons handed the Eagles their first loss last week. So as the Eagles prepare to face Skip's Cowboys in Philly for week two, they're definitely feeling the pressure to redeem themselves. Since 1990, only 12% of teams who have started the season with an 0-2 record go on to make the playoffs. And even if Philadelphia does win this week, only 41% of teams who have started off 1-1 one one have reached the postseason under the current playoff format. We asked you guys at home to weigh in on this one. Who would win Sunday? The results are in. And according to you, Fly Eagles Fly, 65%. Cowboys, yes. 34 I'm taking the Cowboys skip 28-24. to 24. I don't know if you like that or not. That's what I'm going with. Uh-oh. Now I'm in big trouble. Why? Jinx. I'm good luck. <laughs> I don't like either of you right now. I'm good luck. <laughs> A must win for the Eagles, Stephen A. Be nice. Well, I think it's a must win for the Eagles. I mean, obviously, you don't want to say that. It sounds, uh, you know, like you're engaging. Well, like I'm engaging in hyperbole when I say such a thing because it's only week two of the NFL season. But I think that. But a that's loss. what you said. Right? If you would let me finish, well, I, that's where I, I was I, going. I was getting ready to say, but, but that's what I'm saying. Well, so why you got to finish my problem? sentence for me? I was saying that's what people were I trying to say. To sort of but I was getting ready to do it your... myself. Yeah. You understand? Give, give, I, give I a brother need to hands. hold your feet to the fire. Well, that's what you I'm trying to of... do. You even let me finish my yeah, party. What's up with that? What's up with that? You're so awful. Listen, listen, listen. You can't make excuses. You usually let me finish the thought of your set then. I heard waffles. Me too. I Smelled waffles. Wait, well, listen. I did. Well, maybe it's because I ate it about yeah, an hour and a half yeah. ago. I did I eat a waffle, right? So, 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 whatever. Yeah. So here's the deal. Here's the deal. When you look at the Philadelphia Eagles, I'm rolling with them. I think it's a must-win situation. I think it's a source of desperation, regardless of how folks try to downplay it. And as a result, I think that's what's going to be the case. I think they're going to operate. They're going to respond to Khan. I think they're going to take advantage of Des Bryant's absence. I think they're going to take advantage of the absence of Randy Gregory, who I didn't mention earlier. Hardy, Skandrick, and those boys. Well, Lana Lana McClain. McClain. Yeah. Okay, I get all of that. But here's the other thing. When you look at the Eagles and their running attack, now, Chip Kelly is fond of saying when you dip and dunk it to a running back to him, that's like a running play. That's something that Andy Reid used to say, which used to drive us in Philadelphia crazy. For like those, a long hand For those off. who don't know, yeah. I wrote for the Philadelphia Choir for, for 17 years. I was a columnist for my last seven years there from 03 to 2010. The point that I'm trying to make to you is that when you look at the Eagles and what Chip Kelly says, that is a point. And then I'm looking at two guards who essentially just, you know, the two new starters. You got Barbary, you got Gardner. Now, Barbary, his is supposed to be, his, everything with him is supposed to be about his strength. Yeah. Read the articles in Philadelphia. Philadelphia all week long. They're talking about how he got pushed around by Atlanta. Gardner, you expect some production from both of them. Talk about inside zone as opposed to outside zone. When you're running with an inside zone scheme, essentially it puts bigger boys up against smaller guys, which enables your running game to be more successful. The Eagles were doing that in the second half against Atlanta to some degree in the first half against Atlanta. That wasn't the case. They know their bread and brother, their bread and brother's mm -hmm. inside zone running. So they got to figure that out. Against Dallas, they're going to have to do that. I believe they will. I believe DeMarco Murray will have a big game, and that's one of the reasons they'll win. I, I want you to say must win because I need I did say that. I know. I need you to say it because I, I think there's much truth in what you're saying. <clears throat> I want the, the Eagles to feel must-win pressure. I, I want it to, to, to reveal itself in nervy, sort of timid play, like tentative play, instead of desperate play. Okay. If they come out and play desperate and just say, we have got to take it to them right away, and, and they play with confident desperation, I'm in big trouble because I don't have a lot of my horses on both sides of the ball, starting with Des Bryant, obviously. But I know that crowd. I know how quickly that crowd can turn on those players. You know it better than I do. Yes, I do. So the pressure is all on the home team. While it's a must win for the home team, quote unquote, it's a can lose for the visiting team. The Dallas Cowboys can lose this. They, they know now. They, they did what they had to do. They pulled out a near miracle against your New York football giants. And because of that, they lead the division at 1-0. They're going to Philadelphia, so everybody says you should lose that game. And if they do, it certainly is not the end of the world. They have Atlanta coming to Dallas. I, I think they can win at Jerry World against Atlanta. And if they could just go 2-2 two and two through the first four games, they'd be afloat 
when, when you'd start to get these studs back and then you could make your stretch run. So this is nothing, this is a can lose as opposed to a must win. So I, I told you that what I love about the psyche of my Dallas Cowboys is they've won nine straight road games. Two years in a row, they have beaten Chip Kelly in his own backyard. That's really impressive to me. So they are going to go in with some confidence, even yeah. though they know they're overmatched. You, you know they well, will. I, I don't think the Dallas Cowboys believe they're overmatched. I believe next man up, and they think they've got a deep enough squad, a squad with enough depth, that they're going to be able to overcome the absence of some individuals, even somebody as prolific mm -hmm. as Des Bryant, no question about it. And we're going to see what Byron Maxwell does to make up for his anemic performance against Julio Jones in the first half of, of, of Monday night's game, even though in the second half, even though Julio Jones only he caught one pass. It was for 44 yards, setting up a winning field goal. But the combination of him and Walter Thurman the third, we'll see what they do. Another person that I'm keeping my eyes on is the rookie, you know, Aguilar. Mm -hmm. Okay, because he only had, he was only targeted twice in his defense. The stage was too only, big. But he, he was only targeted twice. I know. He only had one reception for five yards, but he was only targeted twice. And Chip Kelly says he was open on several occasions, mm -hmm. but Sam Bradford elected to go to a different receiver. You got to utilize that deep threat with this kid, okay? You can't have this kid out there playing more snaps than anybody outside of Jordan Matthews and yet somehow some way he's only getting targeted two times you're gonna have to use him if for no other reason as a decoy that's what I used to love about the Sean Jackson on the Philadelphia Eagles whether you threw the ball to him or not the fact that he was flying downfield you had everybody worried about him and his speed and because of that you you were able to space the sure. field okay that's what Chip Kelly has. That's how Chip Kelly has to utilize this rookie Nelson Aguilar, and okay. I, I, he, he better do it. Okay. And to your point about how short passes are like long handoffs. Yes, that's what Chip Kelly says, not I, me. I, well, okay. that's what I love about my Cowboys array of weapons because Tony Romo is underrated as a little flip passer, as a little pop passer. He, he he buys a little bit of time. He ducks and darts. And remember, he's a pretty good basketball player. And you see it because he, he threw the, the equivalent of a no-look pass in, in one of those last drives to Joseph well, Randall. What's your definition? Just a little sideways. Why did you classify him as a good basketball player? Because you saw him warming up at Duke's Cameron Indoor Stadium? No. Because Why is he a good basketball player? They all player? talk about it. Because in off-season uh, pickup games with the other players, they say he can really play. Well, it he can really it handle depends. and he can really shoot. I'm not going to knock Tony Romo for that because I have no clue whatsoever. Mm -hmm. But I will say this. A lot of that is contingent on who you're playing against. Well, if you're playing against Scrubs, of course you'll look good. Yep. But what I'm telling you I'm is... I'm saying that he, he, as basketball players. I'm saying yeah. those players as basketball okay. players. He can but, throw to a lot of those backs now. Okay, what I'm saying is he buys time in the pocket about as well as anybody. You know, just, just a little quickness, just a little athletic moves, and then a little no-look to Joseph Randall and hit him right in stride for like 20 yards in one of those long drives. I mean, he's he not do that. quite Aaron Rodgers, but I do get your point. Yeah, Aaron Rodgers can flat out run downfield with the football. Tony cannot run with the football, but he can make you miss but, in but, the pocket. But 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 Aaron, but Aaron Rodgers dance in the pocket. But it's not like the late, late great Gregory Hines. He dances in a different way. Oh, sort of like a Fred Astaire. Well, he he and better I, be dancing on Sunday. I, That's all I. I'm care just about. saying. I'm just saying. Yeah. I like okay. that. Just dancing around, having fun. Yeah, he better be for Fred Astaire on Sunday. Cowboys, Eagles, it's going to be fun. At the link, we got another fun one. Great Rexpectations. Rex Ryan and the Bills face off against the defending champs after a full week of talking. Why am I getting side eye from you, Rexpectations, that's not bad. Did you write that? No. Who oh. has the psychological edge we discuss next? That would be either D or Brian. Mm. I'm going to say D. And I don't think Brian's D. got that kind of rhythm. Oh, okay.